Welcome to the In Search of More podcast. I am your host, Ellie Nash. Join me weekly on my quest for more, more from myself and more from this world. We'll see you on the other side. All right, here we are. What's Another going season. On? Different shirt, different couch, another recording. Stepping things up. Yeah. Um, Amplifying the message. I guess we've been, we've been watching, we've been listening to the um, podcast ourselves and thinking about myself, you know, ways to, to kind of improve it. And as it's almost as everything to do with the podcast, but also nothing to do with the podcast at the same time, because the way we do something is the way we do anything is where we do everything. Right. Right. So holding back here is holding back elsewhere. So one of um, some feedback that we got from others and probably from ourselves from watching it is that your role has kind of been sometimes less active, sometimes more active, but right. it's not because you got nothing to say. Right, right. It's just you're afraid to. I'm a natural facilitator. So it's like, you know, let everyone else get the, uh, the shine. I'll play the shadows. That's kind of been my role. For as long as I can remember, funny yeah. enough. So it's a natural fit for me, yeah. How's that? How's that fitting right now? It's time to step into the light, you know? Right. For sure. I think uh, I can help a lot more people, and I can help amplify the message if I'm, I'm screaming it from the rooftops with you. What is the message? The message is to, it's a lot of different messages, you know, depending on who needs to hear what. You know, certainly... Um, you're not alone, you know, certainly what you think you don't know, you know already, right? Ooh, we can do an episode on that. Yeah, that's a whole, right. you know. That's uh, why the truth resonates. Right. It's, it's resonating. Right. The body knows, yeah, right, for sure. Something inside. Okay, good. What else? It's definitely spiritual, not of this physical world. <laughs> it's 1,000% meaning like. It's, it's everything but the physical, right? The fight is internal, the, you know, everything it's, it's within, right? So you got to fortify yourself differently, you know? And I think hearing the messages of like your struggles and how you overcome and what you could represent, uh, like in the physical sense, right? Successful guy, family, da, da, da. But like internally, that's where the real treasure is, you know? A friend of mine was reading a poem of his to me the other day. And it ended with, I believe the line was, the only thing that's ever changed is our perception. Mm. Yeah, I mean, perception is... We're looking for so much to change in the world. This got to be different, that got to be different. Anything that's ever changed has always started with our perception. Sure. Right. So your perception about yourself as natural facilitator. Natural facilitator. Sometimes. Yeah, invisible sometimes hand. Yeah, for sure. Just kind of always in the background. I, I, take a lot of, I take a lot of pride in that position too because... You know, often many are called fewer chosen, right? But every 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 herd has a shepherd, you know. So um, I think my role is equally important. But you know, I think back to when we first met, and, and just on a personal level, what you represented to me, right? Because I had like this this perception of what success was, and then like you shattered that, right? You you turned that upside down for me. In what way? In what like so. To sp specifics? Mm -hmm. So in my head, like, me making a million dollars was, like, this benchmark. Right. And becoming a millionaire was, like, this thing. So two things happened with you. One, when, like, I I did my own math in my head from working with you, I'm like, oh, he's a millionaire, right? But he gets up every day and he works. He hustles. Like, he's pushing the business forward. He's not, like, laying around somewhere eating grapes. Right, your idea was once you hit a certain place. That's it. You've arrived, right? And also, like, the trajectory of how you get there. Then you, you found out about inflation. <laughs> <laughs> like, you make your first, then you got to, next year you got to make four, right? Um, and, yeah, and just sort of the trajectory and how to get there. So I thought I was going to make my millions one of two ways, right? Um, either playing sports or, like, music. Yeah. Or streets. Or, yeah, all right. So right. three, one of three ways, right? Um, so then, Sports, and I was music, sold on streets. that. Like, that was right. it. I'm play ball. I'm going to rap or I'm going to just milk the streets for what it is. Right. And then seeing you, you know, we're the same age, but, like, you have it. Because that's another thing, too. Like, 
it was an idea in my head. It was never actually, um, like I never experienced it in real life by proximity or nothing. It's just, this is it. But I've never known a basketball player or known anyone that went professional in sports. I've never knew anyone that made it in music. And certainly no one survived the streets that I knew, like to get to that level. So like seeing you, it's like, oh, like this is actually the realistic way to get there. And it's, you think about it, it's no ceiling, right? There's for sure, like, especially in the streets, like, there's a hard ceiling. You're not, you're only going to go so far before. You're dead or in jail. Right. With this is as, as far as you want to take it. So that was one thing. And then the other part, the other thing that really kind of, um, the representation for me is I was, I, spoke, I was speaking to you once and then you said that, um, I guess when you started, you know, getting some success, you, and I, I'm paraphrasing, but you said something along the lines, like, you want to be able to give away a million dollars. That is true. And that blew my mind because I'm like, the whole time I'm like, I can't wait to get it. And you're saying you want to get to a position where you can give it away. And I, that's always stuck with me and resonated with me. And, and yeah, that kind of like showed me that perspective and how you look at things. It's like, it's super powerful. And I started doing my own work and every day now for me, it's half full. I don't see anything half empty. Always opportunity to learn. You know, and, and that's the message that you want to send and the message you want sure. to amplify. Absolutely. Yeah, just um, something about, you know, in terms of work and where people think a million dollars is made. I think it was an article. I think it was in the New York Times. I read a little bit ago. It's like, where are the, where are the millionaires made? Mm. And what we think is that it's influencers, it's athletes, it's, I don't know, celebrity uh, right. celebrities right and yeah those people are all making millions but how many basketball players are there right 300 and how many of them are still millionaires 10 years after their career right right not very that many few. very few and what the article said was the money is not always made where it's sexiest mm. i think it said the most common business most millionaires are small business owners. That's what the article was saying. And auto car dealerships were the most common um, millionaire business. makers. Exactly. Gotcha. So we think of it as what do you say? Sports, yeah. streets, or, or music. Yeah. Right. Celebrities, athletes. Right. Right. Or the easy way, uh, the easy hard way. And a lot of that could have been just my perspective as a black man in America. That's kind of like the messaging that I got speaking of messaging, right? right? It's like, these are kind of your options. Fast forward now, like I have conversations with, with friends and like, I tell them, you know, I find myself a lot of times, like just cause I'm, I have a small business. I'm a small business owner. I work with brands, you know, startup brands that are well-funded and have like real viable products. So, you know, the leadership is usually like experience in business. And I tell them like, it's, it's a lot of ways to skin the cat, if you will. And it's a lot of us. Like, you just got to go look, right? Meaning, if A you, lot of us meaning? Like, a lot of successful black people outside of these, these three facets, right? Like, right. if you go looking, you'll, you'll see For it. sure. Like, science, yeah. tech, whatever you want to do. It's a, a bunch of people there. 100%. But what, sometimes the message in, intentional, maybe. But, like, you want to you wanna hide the cure, put it in a book, they say. Right? So... <laughs> It's like, it's right in front of you, but if, if you want, you got to go look, gotta for look it. at it. Right? So now I don't subscribe to like. It's much sexier to have a, a picture of a guy slamming a basketball. Right, right. Than it is to have a guy pouring over an Excel sheet. Right. Yeah, for sure. Right. So um, <clears throat> what I wanted to actually go on is, first of all, you're showing up. It's like, yo, that's, <laughs> congratulations. <laughs> I appreciate it. So uh, what I want to talk about are some of the things that get in our head from, you know, putting ourselves out there in that way. And there were a few that I noticed of um, maybe the hazards that some of us trip over. Mm -hmm. Three that I know I've experienced where we get caught up in reasons not to. And once you start doing it, the reasons too are, hey, I'm going to have a better life. And you're going to inspire a lot of people as well, especially if you come from all of us have had a hard path in different ways, but especially if you've had an obvious hard path that other people can see and identify with, right? then that can, there, there can be that inspiration. And just to go off on that for a second, I had someone who I worked with for a while 
who was in a senior uh, management position in the company, had a good salary, and he drove an old car. Mm. Broken down car. But it was worse than that. You don't know how many times I heard about his car. <laughs> it's in the shop today. I have a problem here. I'm like, why do you drive this car? Why? Just right. get a new car. You can afford it, number one. Number two, it's you cannot afford this one. <laughs> you, have, you, you, you don't have the up. time, right? Yeah. You don't have the time to deal with these headaches. And he's like, yeah, I'm not sure what to do. It's not so much about the money. I just, you know, feel like if I got a, what am, what am I going to get? And if I, if I got a nice car, I'm going to make people, I'm gonna make people jealous. I'll make people feel bad. And I said, maybe you will. You're going to show up and there are going to be some people who are going to be jealous of you. But there are other people who are going to be inspired by you. So why? Take away the opportunity to inspire people because of a few jackasses who are going to be jealous. Right. And eventually we do that. Easier said than done. And even within doing what we're doing and saying, I'm going to put ourselves out there, there are infinite levels to that. Where it took a while for you to say, okay, I'm even going to be on the podcast. You call yourself the invisible hand. Well, the invisible hand became quasi visible a few months ago. Mm -hmm. But you kind of hid. You didn't show the audience what our conversations are really like right. when the mic is not on. Right, right. To a lot of people, it felt like maybe teacher-student or something versus, hey, no, these are two friends who can talk about issues equally. Right. But you show that because there are infinite levels of stepping into you know, what it is where... Um, meant to be or inspire people so it's not we're not done right there's ways we're holding back right now i'm sure but i wanted to, what i wanted to discuss are the three common things that i found and hear your thoughts on it that hold us back in some way mm. so first one uh false humility mm, that's... or humility maybe genuine humility so listening to to just unpack that a sec for a second listening to you talk about you know, that, that employee that you had, um, like I think of my relationship with you in a lot of ways, would you say that you went through sort of that false humility phase where it's like, cause I've said this to you, like you're an inspiration and can be an inspiration, but you play like this, this like kind of meek, quiet role. Like you're, you know, don't want to cause a ruckus. You don't want to like, necessarily disrupt this is preface it this was some years ago this is not you today right I mean not to say like you show up at a party and you're like right you go crazy but you definitely were sort of like chill quiet you know um you pop in you go into your office you're there you you leave so I wonder if would you say that's something that you went through that false humility I'm talking about me yeah oh ah. yeah I, let's call it even humility mm. right that there is some Right, right. A desire to be or an actual, it doesn't make a difference, but it certainly ends up becoming a very, very false humility. It's a persona that we just hold on to, not wanting to make other people uncomfortable or not wanting to rock the boat in some way. In my case, not wanting to appear arrogant. I saw a lot of people who had this around me. It wasn't around, always, you know, the loudest right. person in the room is that guy who crazy conviction and it's usually always misplaced right right it's the you know the, the person standing on the street corner is saying like hell is gonna freeze over unless you don't do xyz they're the one talking with the most conviction <laughs> right right so right. seeing that and saying i don't want to be like that i don't want to be perceived <laughs> like that and you know res resisting that and even like you said you want to be the invisible hand and it's okay to be Mm -hmm. but just don't do it 100% of the time because there's this time to stand up. All right, it's balance, right? Right. I think on my like, WhatsApp status, I have a quote there. Be still, when, be, be still when you have nothing to say, but when genuine passion moves you, say it and say it hot. Right. So that's fine if that's your general mode, but if you don't have the capacity to switch that, if we don't have the capacity to switch that, if my only mode is the invisible hand, then I can never come out front and say what needs to be said with passion, with fire, sometimes with fury, then maybe I'm a slave to mm. this identity. Versus once I'm willing to change it a little bit, 
even 1% of the time, now I'm free. It's just a situation that made it bring this out of me. Mm-hmm. But at least I have the capacity to, to go there. And false humility sometimes traps us in there for impermanence. We have to stay in this place of right. this identity I've created for myself. In my case, not wanting to step out too far. Mm-hmm. And even though, yes, I've done things over the years... Just like you are, it wasn't my natural state. When I was a child, I wasn't running to the microphone and grabbing it. It was my resistance to it that made it meaningful for me to grab it. To grab it, right. And maybe made me think a few more times before I spoke into it. Right. So so would you say that you've taken those steps? Like you've you're out of that that sort of like mode of like Oh no. False humility is the um I think is the ego of all egos. Mm. It's the trickster of all tricksters. The big, boisterous ego is easy. I can see it, I can spot it, I can slay it. But the false humility is always, it's a serpent, man. It's coming at you from so many different angles. And it's never, it's never finished. How does one, I guess, A, recognize their, their wrestling with that, that snake of humility and, B, how do they, how do they slay that? How do they get out of that? Is it find something you're passionate about? I don't know if there's only one way um, to it. In my case, I became aware of it by having people around me who I've invited to be honest with me. I think that's a very important ingredient. You know, how many of us have people in our lives that we have to walk on eggshells around. We cannot share our opinions. And I'm sure I'm that for some people. And some people, I totally want to be that. Like I much, <laughs> I much prefer you walk on eggshells around me. It's cool. But can we have a, a trusted group of confidants who we allow to give us real feedback and we listen? And when we have that, then the sky's the limit because what can't we, right? My ego is not your ego. Mm. What's holding you back and the dance that you're going to make before you take the steps you need to take, I'm not going to make that same dance for you. I don't get benefit when your ego gets, gets stroked. So I'm not, so if you allow me to be honest with you, and if I allow you to be honest with me, then it's an antidote to a lot. I'm not saying it's the only way out. There are tons of ways to address this, I'm sure. However, um, having, in my case, that's what I think is the most obvious, is having people who are honest with me and just keep repeating it. I want to say something on that. So I have a, um, so I was thinking this, you know, with charity is tricky, right? Sometimes you see it's, Oh, um, should I give it anonymously? Should I give charity anonymously or not? You know, I think it was a Larry David episode where someone gifted, I think he gifted money anonymously or someone else, Kirby Enthusiasm. Mm-hmm. I think it was Larry David or someone else who made an anonymous gift at a charity event. And then he walks around to everyone and <laughs> says, I'm anonymous, I'm anonymous. <laughs> right. So, right, that's the... Yeah. Larry David was being the... Um, a friend to a lot of people there showing how the false ego works mm-hmm. right there. We, we don't always have to have such close friends. We can see it and the messages come all over to us. But I was speaking to a friend once. Oh, I was talking about this rabbi, this rabbi who said, you know, when giving charity, oftentimes it's fully appropriate to announce it. If we're giving money to a poor person, for example, then yeah, what are you announcing that you're, giving? you're embarrassing the other right. individual? But if, if you want to inspire others to give to the same cause or if you want to inspire others to give in general, then making it public can help that. Right. So it's a fur, there's, there's a further benefit. And he cautions against getting lost in false humility when, um, when giving charity. In any case, I was talking to a friend of mine who gives a lot of charity, and for a while it was his practice to put his name on things. and he and I were talking about something we were going to do together. And I asked him, do you want your name on it? And he said to me, no, I've realized how it makes my ego feel. And I want to cut, you know, 
cut it out so I no longer put my name on it. I said, never on anything? He says, no, never. Zero, you know, zero percent of the time because I saw how I feel. So I said, okay, like, do as you please, but if I can be the honest friend to you, never is usually coming from the ego. Wow. Sure, do it. <laughs> do it most of the time, but, you know, imagine... Yeah. The example I gave him, I said, imagine there's a general, which, you know, if, if someone is, he's, he's a religious person. So I imagine, you know, God is a general. God gets to have very many metaphors in, um, within Judaism. Mm -hmm. Father, shepherd, husband. Imagine God is a general and we're taking orders from the general. And the general says, you know, go right, go left. So I'm a good soldier if I can go both right and left. He may tell me 99% of the time to go right and 1% of the time to go left. But once I have the capacity to do both, I can be a good soldier. I said, so what you're saying is that this general can only call on you for one job within charity. I can call you to make anonymous gifts, quiet gifts. But if I need something public, you're not a soldier for that. Mm. And the, the reason I use that example is only to highlight the way the ego um, can, can kind of control things. So that's the first. Right. The humility. The first, the, the false humility, actual humility, just right. the way we, we want to show up in that way. What's the other? The second, thinking we don't know what to do. <laughs> we talked about this on the previous episode, right? Like, or we touched on it a bit, but, um, yeah, kind of, I think that I'll let you, I'll let you go into it. I'll let you speak on it. Um, but what comes to mind immediately about that one is, is what I said earlier. Like you think you don't know but what you think you don't know. You, you already do. Interesting. Right. So that would be true. Say with truths about the world. Okay. Or yourself, yourself. So I had an experience with that recently where I was preparing. Well, let me for say it. Th let's, let's say it a little bit differently. Okay, actually, finish your point. Cause no, you go. You go. You want me it's to your go? show. No. You can, I'm just kidding. Not anymore. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, for sure. Go, go, go ahead. So let, let's talk about thinking I don't know what to do. Mm. Let's, you know, so in some ways I understand what you're saying is, oh, we know on a soul level or this dimension that we know everything like I said before, the truth resonates. Mm -hmm. Okay, that's true about certain things, but you don't know how to um, do everything there is in the podcasting and film video world. So you can totally say, why even start if I don't know everything? Versus, right. well, I know what to do next. I know who to call. But often, that, that's what I mean by don't know. One of the traps we get into is okay so i want to let's say i want to say speak in public you don't know you don't know how to speak in public so a few things we can do you can hire someone okay even if you hire someone you're gonna come out there the first time you're gonna still be a first timer right true so i'll keep going but that's one of the th one of the ways we often tell ourselves just to sit down be quiet play smaller is this idea of we don't know and sometimes it's kind of true. We don't. We don't know the whole story. We don't know all the steps. We don't know everything. But a friend of mine, um, because he's a public persona somewhat, I'll um, give him a shout out for this. Um, Mayor Kay, Mayor Cominson. Yeah. What's the, up, Mayor uh, Kay? Yeah, the breathwork yeah. therapist. For sure. Breathwork coach. He Good said, guy. He's had many identities, but right now we're going to. Yeah. <laughs> breathwork. Um, amazing what he's doing. And Mayor, Mayor taught me something. He said, you know, imagine you're walking through a dark cave and you have a torch. And the torch shows 10 feet in front of you. It always only shows 10 feet in front of you. And the mm -hmm. cave is much more than 10 feet. That 10 feet shows me the next step. The next three or four right. steps. And as I do that, then another 10 feet illuminate. And then I'll know what to do. I don't think I've always had like... Um that vision like i'm comfortable with like just blowing past not knowing i think very much i had to kind of like 
trust the process of things. And that's something that I hold like very dearly that like today I don't know, but like the process of things will get me there. So what do I do know today? Like what, what torch am I holding today? Right. Like I've, I'm for sure. Like I trust that. And, um, it always works out. So, you know, I have, I have reason to believe it. Um, but I think for me, it's been from a young age, if I had to think about it, I've always had to figure things out in a lot of ways. So, so as a result, you've so got to I trust think, yourself. Yeah, it, right. It, I've developed a trust for myself and a trust that I'll figure this out. So are you saying the same thing that Mayor was saying, that I don't know it all, but I know the next step? Yeah. The next step might be research. The next step right. might be asking someone. The next yes. Step. But inside of that, I get lost sometimes. Of course. Meaning like, okay, I took the next step, and now I think I have to go right or left. or, And then for I sure. end up chasing my tail sometimes. And then other things start happening, like self-doubt. Like, okay, maybe I don't know. Maybe, you know, imposter syndrome, for example. Like, okay. We spoke about that. You know, right. Because to your point, when, when, you say, when you say, okay, Ryan may not know about this thing today, but I feel confident giving it to him. On the other side of that equation, it's like, oh, shit. Ellie, trust me. He believes that I can figure this out. Do I, can I, I must, I have to now, like, right. And then that can, that started with me also, which I'm sure a lot of people go through, well, but you know, I've learned to trust the process. That's been my experience. You know what that's like? It's the person, the people who are often most secure in, in their job are the people who think they're going to get fired every single day. Mm. And the people who think they can never get fired are the ones who are at risk with their job. So, <laughs> And that's kind of the same thing here is if you're walking to someone and thinking that and like, oh, yeah, I got this. You know, that's not what you want to go into this new thing you don't know. Right. But I don't know anything about it. Right. And how am I ever going to figure it out? That's the that's the approach. You know, it's Fr um, Freddy, my wife, often asks me if I'm worried about this, you know, if, if I worry a lot about my kids. And I said, no, not like physical safety, stuff like that. No, not so much mm. because I know you are. <laughs> <laughs> right. If she wasn't worried, I, right. I would start to be. So same thing, yeah. right? Because you have doubt, so I have more security. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's cool. What, what, what would be the third thing that we get caught up in? Oh, uh, so this is the, were three, yeah. Yeah, this is the monster of all monsters. <laughs> this is the one that brings the hammer down, locks the, locks the gate, mm. closes the gate, locks it multiple padlocks another gate in front of the gate this is the one that's probably the most difficult to break down like we're imperfect in so many ways how could we do x y or z how dare we in some cases and i'll give you an example um, of that so when i started with um speaking about my story of child sex sexual abuse I remember the first one of the first the, the first place I, I spoke about it was in a, a synagogue in Miami Beach and the organization that I was involved with called Jewish Community Watch and I and you know I was part of it we decided to host a evening in a synagogue on child sexual abuse awareness and I spoke and I think there was a, another male survivor spoke a female survivor spoke a rabbi spoke a therapist spoke a prosecutor spoke you know cover all sorts of angles and there was a particular person in the audience who I was feeling weird vibes from. Mm -hmm. So she was a female who I had known, you know, earlier in my life. And the next day, or not the next day, a few days later, I was back at my therapist who spoke at that event. And he said, you know, we spoke about the event and he said, hey, you know, I want to talk to you about something because... I got a call from someone after the event and I figured I'd talk to you about it. I said, okay. And as soon as he started talking, he said, yeah, there was this girl who came, this woman who called me up and she said, you know, I'm out there talking about the role, you know, what happened to me and how I'm going to help the world and all these other things. But he wasn't so cool with me and I wasn't. Hmm. I was like a yo-yo and 
relationship with her. One day on, one day off. You know. Next day on, next day on, back and forth. I was just a mess. And I hurt her. Right. And she called me out. Thankfully, privately. <laughs> and those, the voice was in my head before. Right? Can I get up and talk about abuse and talk about what's wrong in the world and everything else if I myself am not perfect? More than not perfect, if I myself have hurt people, there are some big mistakes that I've made. What right do I have to do, to do these things? Mm. And I know it sometimes. I know that sometimes me being in this position and talking on this, these things, there are people out there who were hurt by me. And I'm, I'm not talking about some who were offended for ridiculous reasons and I don't consider it to have validity. Some which really do. I agree with them 100%. And some which I don't know that I did it to, but if they told me it, I would agree 100%. And I know that because I've become aware of some of those right. after i have speaking. And I know that doing this, instead of bringing them healing, brings them pain. I know that. And that's the one that's brutal mm -hmm. to overcome. That's a voice that just sounds so noble to do nothing. <laughs> I don't know what you think about that. Something like that is is ever present. Um, I often think about it. It's part of the reasons why I like, I, I like being the invisible hand, to be honest. If I were to be <laughs> honest, it's like, who am I to come out? And when, you know, I've done plenty of wrong, plenty of shortcoming, you know, and yeah, hurt people, you know, did a ton of stuff, but here I am like, helping you know spread this message of whatever uh yeah i think about that a lot but i think those make the best messengers if you will the ones that are flawed and that, that you know that's been through things and because now you have a texture about you that's that feels comfortable to so many people, feels feels familiar to so many people, right? So, um, what I like about you is that, and it's interesting, I wonder what you think about, like, when, when I think about your story and what I like about it is that your your challenge, your struggles, you know, your recovery is is not not like the cool addiction, if you will, right? Like, porn and sex addiction is like taboo and it's looked at and it's you know it's not like alcohol that's like there's no stigma around yeah, it. yeah, yeah like, big AA medallion. no thank you you know right. have some grape juice because you know <laughs> and it's like, oh great but you no know, with respect to everyone that that's that's in that world but yeah yours is sort of like it's like real by deal the way stuff. it wasn't always you know that no i know yeah now right. it is right but what 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 i've always liked about it is is your journey like the path that you that you it's like you on one hand like you're doing incredible in life to the, the untrained eye then on the other side you're like reeling right and it's it's good because now there's no excuse when someone hears your message and that's maybe stuck or wants to like uh make a change like, now you have no excuse, right? Because here's a guy that represents everything, right? And he's saying that, like, yo, this stuff is destroying my life, right? So, meaning people might think, like, if you're successful or if you have, you know, healthy relationships with people, like, you're good. Like, you know, or if you don't, you know, if you're not, like, falling all over yourself, like, you're good. But you represent that for a lot of people, right? Um, well-spoken guy, you know, healthy relationships. Everyone speaks highly of you for most regards. But you're saying like, no, I'm flawed. Like I'm, I'm tattered and torn. Like I'm, I'm in the throes of this. And then I decided to make a change. So how can you not I'm deciding listen to, to make a change or right? deciding a, to make a right, change? So how process. can you not listen to someone? Right. Cause it's far from it. Right. The right. relationships, meaning are, like there are relationships you, in my life that are not working at all. Right. right. Meaning like if you were, like stuck in the addiction and like then it's like uh, of course you're an addict <laughs> i can't really listen to you i'm not fully there 
Or if you're like the shiny suit guy, it's like, of course, like, you can't relate to me because I'm down here and you're up there, right? So I think, I think the people that make the best messengers messengers are the ones that are flawed and 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 have those challenges. But for sure, that's definitely the 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 blocking key that keeps us like stuck, right? Like, no, you can't do that. Are you have you looked in the mirror? How dare you? Right. You can't speak about that. You can't talk in that way. You can't, you know. Um, share your story to help others you know well i take that back like you can but like you you can't there's this feeling that you don't have the right to right you don't have right. the right to who are you right like no because one because of x y or z because of x y or z how did you was it sort of like like force like you have no choice you can't like you got to take this role for whatever reason or was it like more of a conscious decision was it like s circumstantial or was it it was some and some okay you know Sometimes there was an anger that erupted that said, okay, I got to do something with this. I'm just furious at the fact that uh, so many people were sexually abused and not enough has been done. Mm. And that anger is what propelled me to speak. And today I would, with some of these things, there's more of a, a purpose behind it and say, I've, I, I know there are people who are hurt. I know there are mistakes I've made. I know that, I don't know everything I'm doing. I know that um, I can be misunderstood, all, right. all sorts of things. I understand the risks. But at the same point in time, I also know that there are people who've heard me speak and said, listening to you made me realize that I want to stop porn. Listening to you made me realize that the child sex abuse, the, the fact that I was sexually abused is impacting my relationship big time. Listening to you is what made me check into rehab. Or and on and on and on, and those kind of experience experiences have led me to oftentimes a purpose that hey this is what I got to do, and that may take me through the next ten steps that purpose, and then the next thing may be a challenge or anger right. There's so many ways and so many things we channel to keep pushing forward. But in regards to the problems, you know, one source of pride that I definitely take in my problems is that I try not to have the same ones for too long. So, you know, while it's true, I struggled heavily with porn addiction. I no longer have that today. And while I've had really rough relationships uh, with almost everyone at one point in my <laughs> life, now it's with less people mm. and different people. And, you know, on, on and on is just, could we create new problems for ourselves? Because whatever we do, we're going to, we're, whatever we do, we're going to have problems, right? We, we're, we're, we're wrestling somewhere on the mountain. There's a question where on the mountain we want to wrestle. Right. So oftentimes I hear stories, and we've spoken about this on, you know, the Deliciousness of Victimhood podcast, for example, where 10 years people are talking about the same problem. And those are ones that's, it's admirable that they're talking about the problem and they're vulnerable and open and everything else. But you're still in that same problem for a long time. Why is the same problem kicking your butt for so many years? And if it is, are you trying new things? That's, that's mm -hmm. fine. That's fine. Some problems take longer to solve, but are you trying new things? Are you throwing new things at it in order to try to, to work this out? And that's something that I do take pride in. The fact that I'm not in the same problem often. I, I, what I should say is, year to year, my three biggest problems are really the same. And if they are, there's a, a if they're in the same theme, there's a there's enough of variation to it that says, okay, there's something that was was done here, and that's some of what gives me the um, the comfort to say I've earned this a little bit. Like I can. I, I can do that, and I, I can do this. I can speak. There's something I can share because I've learned some of so much of this through suffering, just, right. like, just as you have, right? You've been through certain experiences that not many people have survived, and if they have, I don't, I don't mean necessarily survived physically, maybe right. that, that might be true also, but certainly thrive from. And then that's, I need to earn this. Like, hey, there's something to learn from me. And am I struggling? Yeah, you're struggling in all sorts of ways. 
you know, you were struggling as of an hour ago and stepping into this right. in this way. That's true, but this is a new problem because two months ago you were struggling with not wanting to be seen at all. No one knew who Ryan Carter was, but he was so much a part of this, this process. Just to wrap this up, so what you're saying is, in terms of these three things, despite the fact that you don't know what you're doing, mm-hmm. <laughs> despite the fact that you feel you've made mistakes, and despite the fact, what was the third one? The third one, you've made mistakes, you don't know what you're doing, and uh, humility, like false right. humility. And we have this, you know, this perceived sense, and you have this perceived sense that I got to, my nature is, whatever nature means, <laughs> right. my nature is to be the invisible hand. Despite all of those things, you're saying, here today, I'm stepping forward, leaning into this. and Yeah. And let me be a signal to anyone else that's listening to this, Dad. This message got to be amplified. Yeah. This message got to be amplified. We get to have more. We get to share more. We get to be more. Amen. Amen.